What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today we're bringing it back to our James Bond preparation marathon with the 13th film in the series. That's right, Unlucky 13, it's Octopussy. What a title. First things first, in my original review of this film, I believe it was the overall worst rated film in the bunch. That's not to say the same still applies. After all, my scores as a general rule have been wildly improving on rewatch. So that could change. You never know. But I will tell you that my original score was 57%. And why that's interesting is because on rewatch, I've scored the previous film lower than that already. So there's already a chance that I may have a new lowest ranked film in the Bond universe. We'll see if I can disabuse this film shortly. Let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, disabused, to free from error, misconception, or fallacy, like when I've slowly been disabusing my penchant to hate Roger Moore's James Bond. Octopussy takes James Bond on a jewelry smuggling operation, again, when a Fabergé egg has been stolen and replaced with an exact replica. Another 00 agent was investigating the same case before he wound up dead, so James Bond has taken the case as well. Before long, he discovers that the stolen goods have something to do with nuclear missiles, again, which James Bond must deal with again. Now, as you could probably tell, we're not off to a great start. There were definitely elements in this film that they annoyed me. Every now and again, I have the feeling that James Bond has been running out of ideas. This was one of those times. As there was nothing in this film that felt distinct or different, but instead it felt like it was copying a number of elements that we've already seen in the universe already. We've already had a ton of James Bond movies wind up with nuclear missiles, bombs, similar. We've already had MacGuffins. This time it's a shiny egg. We've already had jewelry smuggling. We've had gold and Goldfinger. We've had diamonds and diamonds are forever. And this time it's just jewelry in general, which is boring. The villain's plan at the end of the day still didn't even make a lot of sense because they failed to really explain what they're doing or why. There's elements here and there that try to kind of, sort of explain it, but it's not enough, and I wasn't involved or engaged in the story enough to fully understand it. You want to know what was new with this film? It was the fact that they stopped trying all together and embraced how ridiculous Roger Moore is. He legitimately wears a clown and gorilla costume in this film. Why? Because I guess he can't hide behind a pillar anymore to be stealthy. He has to completely dress up in an elaborate, silly costume instead. I honestly find it hard to find anything super engaging about this film. I think there's one or two sequences in this film that are heart racing. And that's pretty much everything on the train and the airplane later on in the film. I've always loved action sequences that take place in or on top of train cars. This does both. And uh, everybody knows Tom Cruise is famous for holding onto that plane in Mission Impossible, but James Bond did it first here, and it's kind of nuts. So if anything, I guess we'd consider those things are silver linings, but I'm not somebody who can just view one or two good action sequences and just forgive the rest of the film. It just doesn't work. I've said it before, I'll say it again, Roger Moore's just too old to play this character. He already was, and yet he still keeps ticking. He has another movie after this, and let's just say I'm not really looking forward to that one either. Here's another factoid for you. My son wound up running in and watching some of this movie. He started laughing, and he said, this is kind of funny. And I'm all like, it's not supposed to be, but I agree. Let's go ahead and talk about the final score for a second. The best word that can describe this film is formulaic, or in other words, safe. But because it takes a lot of weird decisions, like making James Bond wear a clown costume... It's really not that great of a film overall. My unbiased score is pretty low at 52%, and my bias is even lower at 48%. Averaging everything together, we get a final score of 50%. 50 out of 100 possible stars, which means that this film fails and once again finds a new home in my ranking as the lowest James Bond film so far. I mean, that could change, of course, with other James Bond films that I have yet to see on my rewatch, but I doubt it. I don't know. The next film people often say is worse than this, but I guess we'll find out next time. Guys, tell me your thoughts on this film in the comments down below. What did you think about it? Do you actually think it's a good James Bond film? What do you remember most about it? Do you remember the stunts the most, or do you remember silly things like him wearing a clown costume or gorilla costume the most? Let me know. As for YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button if you like this review because there's more like it coming out. Hit the thumbs up button because it always helps out my channel. And don't forget about the little bell icon because that'll help notify you when I come up with my next review. And until then, peace out!